forget. Hallelujah. What you've done for me. Yes. So much, so much. Down through the years, God has been good to us. And we can't forget his blessings and his goodness. Praise your Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Good morning. Good morning. People of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. And we're blessed. The scripture says, Blessed is a man who puts his trust in the Lord and whose confidence is in the Lord. Because you know what? We walk by faith and not by sight. And that's why we can never forget what God has done for us. Greetings again in the name of our Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ. We come to you this morning from the St. Peter Fire Baptized Holiness Church located at 1712 Hoagland Court. And we're just glad that you are here with us on this morning. Our pastor is the Reverend Joseph L. Roberts. And we're here in this community with one message and one mission, and that's to bring souls to Christ. And we're glad again that you stopped by to see us on this morning. You could have been anywhere. You could have selected any place to worship, but you're here with us, and we're thankful and great, praising God for that. You're in for a blessing because all power and all blessings rest in the hand of the Lord. And we're praying that as you entertain and involve yourself in this service, that you won't leave the way that you sang. You came. We're praying that an encouraging word is said that will transform your life in some way and that you will receive a blessing that you will not be able to contain. Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me because you've done so much for me, I can't tell it all. Please receive our music ministry.
never forget how good God has been, how faithful he has been, how loving and how merciful and how kind. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Come on and give our God some praise. He's worthy, he's worthy, he is worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, our Lord is worthy to be praised. My scripture reading is coming from the book of Psalms. I'm reading Psalm 100 from the New King James Version, and it reads, Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God, and it is he who hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his holy name. For the Lord is good. For the Lord is good. For the Lord is good. And his mercy is everlasting. And his truth endureth to all generations. Come on and give our Lord a hand cup of praise on this morning. The word of the Lord is blessed. At this time, we're going to ask Reverend Ethel King to come, and she will be offering our prayer on this morning. Come on and celebrate her as she comes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, bless the Lord, oh, my soul, and all that. Oh, God, all oh, the benefits. Oh, God, bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. Hallelujah. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we come before you this morning. Lord, we come before you thanking you for who you are. Oh, God, you're great and majestic. You're powerful, yet you're loving and kind. Oh, God, you're merciful. Oh, God, you give us pity when we need it, oh, Lord. Oh, God, there's nothing too hard for you. Oh, God, you love us, though we are unworthy. Oh, God, you look down on us. Oh, God, you sit high and you look low. There's nothing that surpasses you, oh, God. Oh, there's nothing that rivals you, oh, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we love you today, Lord God. We bless your name today, Lord, for your name alone is Excellent, oh God, it's worthy to be praised today. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just honor you, Lord God. We honor you, we reverence you, oh Lord. Oh God, you're our hope on today. You're our help on today, Lord God. Oh God, without you, we could do nothing. Oh God, but with you, we can do all things. Oh, Father, we just love you. We just thank you. We just lift you up. We adore you on today, Lord God. There's no one or nothing like you on today. Oh, God, you are great. Oh, God, omnipotent, omniscient. Oh, and omnipresent are you, oh, Lord. Oh, God, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you on today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, God, we thank you for your son. Oh, God, you sent your one and only son. Oh, God, your precious son, your only begotten, you sent to earth. Oh, God, to redeem us. Oh, Lord, we thank you to bring us back into reconciliation. With you, Lord, we just thank you. Oh, Lord, we thank Jesus. Jesus, we thank you. Oh, for what you did for us. How you hung, bled, and died on Calvary's cross. 
Oh God, you hung there. You could have come down at any time. Oh God, but Jesus, you hung there. Oh, and then you went to the grave and you rose. You got up, hallelujah, and ascended, oh, to your father. Oh, and now you sit at his right hand. Oh, in your at his right hand, there you sit interceding for us, yet working. Oh, God, we just love you. We love you, Lord, and we thank you for what you have done. We thank you for what you're doing. Jesus, we thank you for what you're yet to do. Oh, we lift you up. We honor your name. For you are great, oh Lord. Oh, we thank you. We just thank you. We thank you for all things. Oh, because everything that you do is perfect. Everything that you said in your word is perfect. Oh, God, it's true. Oh, we honor your word. We love your word. Oh, it's powerful and it's sweeter than honey. Oh, Lord, we ask you on today to look on those that are sick. Oh, those that are poor and needy on today. We ask you to look on them today, Lord God. Look on each of us today. Those on the platform and those that are here. We ask you, oh God, to look on us, oh God. Oh, give us a clean heart, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Teach us, oh Lord, that we might be whom you have called us to be. Oh Lord, look on those that are being persecuted for righteousness' sake. Look on them, oh Lord. Oh God, give them the strength that they need. Oh, help them to hold out and to hold on to the very end. Help us all to hold out, Lord God, those that you have called. Oh God, whatever you've called us to do, Lord God, let our hands be busy doing just what you call us to do. Let us be obedient, faithful, earnest, honest. Help us to be humble, meek, and lowly. Father God, we want to be like Jesus. We want to be like Jesus. Oh, Lord, uh, we want to be like him. Oh, because he's your son. And you have called us each, oh God, to do the work that you've assigned to us. Whatever work it is, oh Lord God, let us acknowledge it. Let us do the work. Let us honor the work. Oh, God, as we pray today, offer our prayers, for it is a privilege to come before you today. It is a privilege to stand in your presence today. Oh, God, because you are great. Oh, there's no one like you, Lord God. It's a privilege, oh, to be able to call on your name at any time. Oh, Lord, and to know that you hear our cry. Oh, God, we earnestly look to you, our Lord, our eyes upon you, Lord God. Help us to hunger and thirst after you, oh, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, as the deer panted out of the water brook, so let our hearts pant after you, oh, Lord. Let us put you first in our lives, oh, and in our every day. And in our every moment, be first and utmost. Oh, God, uh, be the head of our lives, oh, God. Uh, the center of our life, oh, God. For you are worthy, worthy, worthy on today. And we thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord, let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in your sight, Lord God. We ask that, oh God, everything that is done today in this worship service be according to your word. Let it please you. Let it honor you, Lord God. Let it glorify you, Lord God. We ask you to look on our leader on today, God. 
Bless him, oh Lord God. Oh, cause him to prosper in every way. In the name of Jesus. Lord, look on every believer, oh God. Oh God, every pastor, every preacher, every teacher, every evangelist, every prophet. Oh God, strengthen us, oh Lord. Let us be strong and courageous, oh God, in doing your work. Help us not to forget that it's not about us, but it's about you, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Help us to remember that we're not our own, but we were bought with the price. Oh, in Jesus' name, we thank you, we honor you. We thank you for every blessing. We thank you for forgiving us our sins. Oh, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Oh, we thank you so much for your greatness and for your kindness toward us. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. The underlying theme of our services on this morning is thank you. Sister Ethel started off with thank you. She ended with thank you. Hallelujah. So woven into the fabric of this service on this morning is a thank you. Lord, I want to thank you because you've done so much for me. I just can't tell it all. We're so glad to see our um, those that are in the audience on today praising God for those who we haven't seen in a while, Sister Harriet and um, Sister Joyce and all of those. We just thank God for you on this morning. Um, thank and praise uh, the Lord for that powerful, powerful prayer that Sister Ethel prayed on this morning. Minister um, King prayed on this morning. Flowing from my heart is thankfulness. Thankfulness. Lord, I want to thank you because you've done so much for me. Hallelujah. We're just grateful on this morning uh, for how God has blessed this ministry for over 65 years. To God be the glory and the honor for the things that he's done for St. Peter right here in Evanston. And we're here to serve those who are lost. Yes, we are. And because God has blessed us down through the years, we in turn would like for you to be a blessing to this ministry as well. The Bible tells us that he who sows generously will also reap generously. And so we ask that you give what God has put in your heart to give on today. And there are several ways to sow into this ministry. You can use our, our a cash app, which is St. Peter SWO. That's ST, the abbreviation St. Peter SWO. Or you can sow through our Zelle. That's again our initial St. Peter ST FBH1. St. Peter FBH1 at hotmail.com. Or you can use um, your credit card by dialing 847 903 4479. 847 903-4479. If you just want to mail that donation here to the church, just uh, mail it to 1712 Holy Court here in Evanston, Illinois, 60201. Thank you again for your continuous support of this ministry. Without you, we would not be as far as we are in our ministry. We just want to thank you. Let us pray. Precious God, we thank you for the offerings and the donations that are coming in as we speak. God, we know that you are the giver of life and you've given us all that we have. And we're giving back to you on this morning. And we ask that you bless and restore, God, those who are making that sacrifice, those who are giving to you on this morning out of the depths of their heart. God, we ask that there's some that want to give but don't have it. We ask that you bless them as well, Lord. Restore 60, 90, and 100 fold, Lord. And we'll give you the glory, we'll give you the honor, and we'll give you the praise, God. We want to thank you from the bottom of our heart for what you continue to do for this ministry. Thank you, God. Presence, behold the 
if you're glad to be in the presence of the Lord, won't you lift your hands and begin to magnify him? Worship him. Put something amazing on your lips and tell God how wonderful it is to be in his presence. I know you prayed this morning. I know you've already worshiped before you came through the door, but it's an amazing thing when we can do it together. David said, I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Is there anybody at Greater St. Peter? Is there anybody on Facebook or YouTube that's going to bless and magnify the name of the Lord with us? The name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run in and are saved. The name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run in. Where are you running to? To this morning you call me your own oh lord i give you me you call me your own and lord i give you me you call the world hallelujah right here in your presence father in jesus name we love you and we thank you we adore you and we magnify you we appreciate you lord you're so amazing there's nobody like our god there's nobody like our God. So, Lord, we must be, we've got to be in your presence on today, God. Oh, God, so we pray, God, that the continuous and the furthest of this worship, God, will continue to be strength, God, will continue to be encouragement, God, will continue to be an outpour, God, of your love and your generosity, of your grace and your mercy and of salvation and deliverance and healing. So, God, do what you came to do, God, in this place, in the name of Jesus. Sanctify us today, God. Purify us, God. Make us one with you, God. Increase our capacity to love, God, and understanding, God. Oh, God, we pray the grace of God would be abounding to our account on today. Lord, we thank you for the season of revival and restoration. And, God, we pray, pray now, God, that you will move in the midst of the word God encourage empower and equip God that someone will leave here better in the mighty name of Jesus but Lord let it begin in me God in the name of Jesus so I pray God that the winds of glory God will take over God in the name of Jesus I declare the winds of glory to take over in the name of Jesus I declare the wind of glory to take over in the name of Jesus I declare the wind of glory to take over in the name of Jesus. Lord, have your way in this place and wherever this broadcast may be found. Oh, God, declare healing now. Oh, salvation and healing in the name of Jesus. We love it. We honor you, Lord, in this place in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody and clap your hands and bless the name of the Lord. Come on, bless his name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, somebody, now open up your mouth with them hands that you're clapping and begin to worship him and begin to honor him and begin to bless him for the Lord is good what if this was your last time giving God glory what if this was your last opportunity to tell God thank you how would you give God glory how would you tell God thank you how would you magnify him how would you bless him how would you honor him how would you lift him up this may be my last time in the sanctuary so I want my, my last time I want the last time if this might be that chance to be my best time and I wish somebody in this place will give God the best praise that you can hallelujah the best praise the best praise my God what if your praise had to save you what if your worship had to enter you in come on and give God some best praise come on and give him glory come on and give him the honor Come on and bless him. Come on and bless him. For the Lord is good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the name of the Lord. We honor and we celebrate his name. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. And one thing I love about this place, you ain't got to try to find him. He's already here. So I just need somebody to tap into the spirit of the Lord. I don't really want to dance because I don't want to break nothing else on Caleb's body. Do you hear me? But I'm telling you, the power of the Lord is in this place on today. Hallelujah. I said the power of the Lord is in this place. I don't know what you come here looking for. I don't care what you need. But whatever you need is in the building on today. If it's healing, if it's restoration, if it's deliverance, 
thanks, if it's a word, if it's worship, if it's a praise, it's in the building. And only thing you got to do is step into it. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I got to tap in. 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 in. Because I refuse to leave here with what I came with. I will leave it here. And I will leave here better. I will leave it here. And I will leave here stronger. I will leave it here. And I will leave here wiser. Somebody shout yes. Second Kings chapter 23. Second Kings chapter 23, beginning at verses 4 through 7. Second Kings chapter 23, verses 4 through 7. Akesha Talabasi. Second Kings chapter number 23, verses 4 through 7. And the king commanded Hilkiah the high priest and the priests of the second order and the keepers of the door to break bring forth out of the temple of the Lord all the vessels that were made for Baal and for the grove and for all the hosts of heaven. And he burned them without Jerusalem in the fields of Kindron and carried their ashes of them unto Bethel. And he put down the idolatrous priests whom the kings of Judah had ordained to burn incense in the high places in the cities of Jerusalem and in the places round about Jerusalem. Help me God. Them also that burned incense into Baal, uh, unto Baal, to the sun and to the moon and to the planets and to all the hosts of heaven and he brought out of the grove from the house of the Lord and he brought out the grove from the house of the Lord and he brought out the grove from the house of the Lord without Jerusalem unto the brook Kidron and burned it at brook Kidron and stepped it into small powder and the cast powder thereof upon the graves of the children of the people and he break down the houses of the sodomites that by the house of the Lord were the women wove hanging for the grove just for a moment I want to remind you that the church has a responsibility to pull it down look at your neighbor and say pull it down I'm looking at our praise today pull it down I'm looking at our worship today pull it down I'm looking at how we come into the presence of God this is supposed to be the holy place pull it down look at your neighbor and say neighbor it's time that the church be the church get back your power and your authority and pull it down take your seats because I'm already on 65 Isaiah chapter 42 and 16 one voice says I will lead the blind by a way they did not know I will guide them on the paths they have not known I will turn darkness to, to light in front of them and rough places into level ground this is what I will do for them and I will not abandon them I want you to know for everything that you pull down God is going to turn around and I need somebody to agree with me that it's time that the church become the church of God again and pull it down sister Hunter I miss you saying same Peter Church of God in Christ fire baptized we've got to pull it down the Israelites have always been confused people trusting and believing and then backsliding and leaving but they were and remain the promise of God we must remember that God is a jealous God anybody heard that in your childhood adulthood he's a jealous God and in the word of Exodus chapter 20 verses 3 through 5 it says worship no God but me do not for yourselves images of anything in heaven or on earth or, or in the water under the earth do not bow down to any idol or worship it because I am the Lord your God and I tolerate no rivals I bring punishment on those who hate me and on their descendants down to the third and fourth generation look at your neighbor one more time and just say real quiet because if you say it real loud you might pull some power I want you to say pull it down whisper it if you will tell them pull it down pull it down sometimes do you remember when we used to come uh, well you know the females would come into the church and they would get them going grab something to put on them because the skirts was you know a little too high for to be in the presence of the Lord because we couldn't see God because 
because we saw your legs uh, and they will tell you to pull it down that they will give you a lap scarf just so that you'll be able uh, to be comfortable we don't want you to feel unregarded we don't want nobody looking at you like you're something that you're not uh, we want you to pull it down remember mothers how we used to do somebody say pull it down the problem is ain't nobody in the church pulling on nothing no more. We're looking to be entertained, but we're not pulling on the power. We're looking for a crowd, but we're not pulling on God. We've replaced God with everything except power. And it's time that we go back and we pull it down. There shall never be one before or after him. And certainly not one that shall stand up before him. But we create God. And it's nothing new to have this Uzziah in our lives. When the Hebrews seen the miracles right before their very eyes, when they seen God move, when they seen and experienced God doing it over and over and over, Moses would turn or when he went to be in the presence of God for them, they would revert back to the idol worship. And it took the real believers, can I say that again? It took the real believers to stand and intercede and lead them back it took the real believers I wonder if I got at least three real believers in greater St. Peter it took the real believers to stand and to intercede and to lead them back before the contrary they had to come down if this is what it took for them in biblical times I want to pose the question what do you think it's going to take for us today somebody must stand and pull it down it might be popular but there is no power we've got to pull it down it may draw a crowd but Christ is not there we've got to pull it down they're singing and shouting but nobody is getting saved sanctified or set free we've got to pull it down I know this is not a popular message but it's a necessary one because we've gotten to the ways of the world and the world has taken over the church we've got to take back our authority and pull it down Joseph before you get excited and take us to where we're going we need to know how we got here somebody say pull it down uh, it's good to know where we was in 2nd Kings chapter 21 verses uh, 1 through 18 I can't read all of that but I'm gonna do a little bit of it uh, it was talking about King Manasseh he was 12 years old when he became king of Judah and he ruled for 55 years uh, he followed in the footstep of his idolatrous and his sinful fathers and the legacy uh, oh my god he sinned and rebuilt the pagan places of worship that his father Hezekiah had destroyed. You do know Hezekiah, don't you? Uh, he built his altars of the worship of Baal and made images of the goddess Asherah and King Habab of Israel did. Manasseh also worshipped the stars. He built the pagan altars in the temple, the place where the Lord had said is where he should be worshipped. What have we brought into the temple and taken the place of the presence of God? In the two courtyards of the temple, he built altars for the worship of the stars. He sacrificed his son as a burnt offering. He practiced divination and magic and consulted fortune tellers and mediums. I just want to note you to know why they had to pull it down. He sinned greatly against the Lord and stirred up the Lord's anger. He placed a symbol of the goddess Asherah in the temple. He placed about which the Lord had said to David his son and Solomon here in Jerusalem in this temple is the place that I have chosen out of all of the territory of the 12 tribes of Israel as a place where I am to be worshipped and if the people of Israel will obey all my commands and keep the whole law that my servant Moses gave them then I will not allow them to be driven out of the land that I gave to their ancestors. It seems to me that the power and the presence of the Lord has been driven out and now we got entertainment. The power and the presence of the Lord have been driven out and now there is no power the power and the presence of the Lord has been driven out and sister Jackie got to almost do a cartwheel to get somebody to stand up and clap their hands the power of the Lord has been driven out and I got to stand up here and do five flips trying to make somebody clap their hands or agree what God has saying I don't spend 42 hours a week trying to read a scripture to entertain you but I come to tell somebody that it's time to flip script 
and change and pull it down. Where is the power? It seemed like the world got it because it ain't in the church. It ain't, I don't care what you say. It ain't here because if it was here, it wouldn't take no cheerleader. If it was here, it wouldn't take no prophet from Arkansas. If it was here, we wouldn't have to go and get nobody because you would possess it, you will honor it, and you will release it. God did not save and sanctify you so that you can sit up in here and act like you got it all together. God did not bring you out of what you brought came out of so that you can sit here in this sanctuary and seem like life is sweet. But God brought you out. He poured some things down in your life. And I come to tell us today that some of us have put them back up. Let me move on. I've come to remind us that it doesn't matter where they're going. How good it looks, the grass is not always greener on the other side. Anybody went on somebody else's grass? Oh, you thought it was some turf and it ended up being some false dirt. The grass is not always greener on the other side. But it's time in this season and for the rest of our lives that we make sure that we stay with God. We've got to stick with what's right. It might be popular, but I'm not looking for popular. I'm looking for power. I'm not looking for a crowd. I'm looking for Jesus Christ. I need something that's going to help me when I can't help myself. And it ain't coming from no crowd. Believe me, I tried. I tried. I tried. I tried. But it's coming from the power of pulling down strongholds. It's coming from the power of reconciling relationships. It's coming from the power of being in the presence of God. It's coming from the power of pulling down everything that's not like God somebody shall pull it down Proverbs 6 and 16 and 19 says there are six things that the Lord hates seven that are an abomination to him haughty eyes pull it down a lying tongue oh it's in the church pull it down and hands that shed innocent blood a heart that devises wicked plans pull it down feet that make a haste to run to evil pull it down a false witness who breathes out lies pull it down and one who sows discord among the brethren don't you you know that these things that God hate is in the church don't you know that it's happening here but the Bible tells me that warning comes before destruction and it also says that the judgment of God will begin in the church church the judgment of God is here and we've got to go back and repent and pull it down Sister Jackie, I can't remember the words to the song, but I pulled this from it. If God will pour down, he will take down, he will destroy anything exalted and consider to distract and destroy his promise. He will bring it down. He will bring it down. So everything that you've put out in your life that you've exalted before God, it might be your children, it might be your masters or your PhD, it might be where you live because you're in the bur burbs, it might be the car that you drive but I've come to tell somebody you can't put nothing before God because he's still a jealous God and if you don't pull it down he'll take it down the high place was not uncommon for the believers as they traveled and before the temples were built they worshiped and created sacrifices to God on the high place the high place was not always a demonic place of idolatry but demonic sin of man wanted to exalt self and a deity and we can see that now in the world that we are want to be we need to be popular we need to be called if don't nobody call us we don't feel like we're human anymore if they don't put our name on a program we don't feel like we're worthy and we're not always seen and heard is something going wrong in our natural body this thing ain't spiritual you need some help you need the Lord to come in and do something in your life and I want to declare to this place that God has not forgotten his promise about you and everything that we lifted up before God it's got to come down St. Peter it's got to come down pride it's got to come down a haughty spirit it's got to come down somebody say pull it down pull it down down, pull it down I'm trying I'm trying I'm trying it is important to know that if God is not on this high place it must come down 
The earliest mention of a high place in the Bible first was read in Genesis 12, 6 through 8, where, Mo, where Abraham built altars to the Lord at Shechem and Hebron. Abraham built an altar in the region of Moriah and was willing to sacrifice Isaac, his son, there. Studies believe that the high place is where the temple of Jerusalem was built. Jacob set up a stone pillar to the Lord at Bethel, and Moses met God on the mountain, the high place. Joshua set up stone pillars after crossing the Jordan and Consider this a high place of worship because the Israelites came up from the Jordan onto higher ground. The high places were visited regularly by the prophet Samuel. High places were also places of Canaanite worship. It wasn't always good. Sometimes it got bad because people needed to exalt themselves before God. They needed something they can see and something they can feel. Isn't that what that song in the world said? Giving me something that I can feel. They needed something that they can see and something that they could feel because seeing was believing. But for the believer, I'd rather believe God before for I have to see God because I'm a trust God that he's going to bring it down. Extended into the period of Elijah, God would name only one high place where sacrifice was authorized and that was the temple in Jerusalem. God commanded that all other high places be destroyed. God commanded that all other high places be destroyed. King Josiah destroyed them in 2 Kings chapters 22 to 23. And that's where I find our context on today. Slow down, Joseph. I know we got to get to the south side, but I think we got the time. Keep me on board, y'all. Please keep me, keep me, keep me. The pulpit for many is not the place of delivering the word of the Lord anymore, but it's simply a place to stage and perform, to itch ears and to entertain. I see more pastors' pictures than I see the pictures of of the Ten Commandments. I see more pastor's pictures hanging than I see of the Lord's Last Supper. I see more of pastor's pictures than I see welcome to this place. We're trying to entertain for followers and for crowds. But I declare that the Lord is returning to his place and pulling down every high place that is exalted before him. I wish the believers would declare pull it down. Why? Because it's coming down. Whatever you have given a authority to assign as head, given way and abandon God with, yes I'm talking to the believer, whatever you have given way, put up, the, up of your, over your head and have abandoned God with, it's time to pull it down. Every place in the word where the word where there was an exalting of anything before God, he brought it down and I declare that whatever Messiah that you have in your life if you love it more than you love God, it is an Isaiah, and I'm going to tell you about it in a moment. If you love anything more than you love God, thank you, Donald Lawrence, it becomes a spirit of Isaiah. It must come down. On last Sunday, they had, a, I think it was Sunday or maybe it was Saturday, they had a wonderful demonstration of how the lady was talking about the King Isaiah, but she was talking about it in a different mode. She began to put the things together to talk about that's going to be something to remember what God had done. And I come to tell you, I stay in the same vein. There's going to be something to remember what God has done. When you pull it down, you will finally be able to see God. How do I know? Because in the book of Isaiah chapter number six, six when he stopped worshiping and idolizing and weeping over dead Uzziah for the sins and his death, it's recorded that in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and exalted, but first it had to die because I I can't see it because I can't go beyond it. I can't see God because I made this an Isaiah. It became my preliminary worship. Sometimes I put my children before God. I wish somebody would tell the truth in here. I put ministry, church work before I put the work of the Lord. Do you hear what I'm saying? Doing administration when I should be praying. I wish I had some help. Ain't nobody gonna help me. Uh -huh. But in the year that King Isaiah died, when he stopped weeping over it, when he stopped looking for him, because he was dead and wasn't coming back. When he stopped weeping and over the sins and his death, he said I saw the Lord high and exalted, seated on a throne and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphim, each with six wings. You know the story, let me move on. But what I wanted to tell somebody, if you love it more than you love God, it becomes a spirit of Isaiah. But I come to tell you, God is going to be exalted and he will pull down any stronghold or any 
anything that stands before him because he is a jealous God and it must die it must come down you've got to take away the power from it is there anybody got enough power in you that you can take the power away from it somebody shout Isaiah must die tell somebody pull it down the goal the scripture goes on to say in verse number five it says woe to me I cried I am ruined for I am a man of unclean lips and I live among people of unclean lips and my eyes have seen the king why did I see the king because I pulled it down I had to get rid of the spirit of Isaiah tell somebody proudness pull it down power pull it down the problems that you're facing and that you're dealing with you got to pull it down predicaments and the things that we allow to be glorified in our lives you've got to pull it down somebody say pull it down but then we go to the scripture text of today I'm trying not to get too happy after the abandonment of God's law and sin King Josiah was raised to be king I come to tell you today St. Peter that God will raise up a brand new people to finish and accomplish his work he's going to pull it down and he's going to exalt he's going to pull it down and he's going to raise up to put him back in his place he was in the line of succession of sinners as kings but he was also in the line of David and the word says that Josiah did what was pleasing to the Lord he followed the example of his ancestor King David sometimes I can't follow my mama sometimes I can't follow my father sometimes I gotta look at great great uncle sometimes I gotta look at my great great grandmother strictly obeying all the laws of God Josiah sent the secretary to the high priest to get the offerings so that they could keep rebuilding the temple the priest found the book of the law in the temple oh I feel real good now and the secretary read it and took it to the king to share the findings and read it to Josiah and it moved Josiah to a place of repentance and it was time now to pull it down everything that was against the will of God it had to go it had to move it had to be down Josiah sent them to the temple prophet and asked for a word concerning this matter I heard Reverend pray this morning about the prophet and I declare this after this morning the prophets of God arise and go forth and declare what the Lord said I declare that the preacher and the intercessor will arise and go forth and do what God said the prophets in word back this, this is what the Lord has said uh, I'm going to punish Jerusalem um, and all its people um, as written in the book that the king has read uh, they have rejected me um, and have offered sacrifices to other gods uh, and have stirred up my anger by all they have done uh, my anger is aroused uh, against Jerusalem uh, and I will not die down my God uh, as for the king himself uh, this is what I the Lord God of Israel say uh, you listen to what was written in the book uh, you repented and humbled yourself uh, before me tearing your clothes uh, and weeping when you heard how uh, I threatened to punish Jerusalem uh, and its people uh, before God moves uh, before God responds uh, I come to tell you it's a good opportunity uh, to repent and pull it down uh, because there's going to be uh, a response from God uh, but we've got to pull it down while we got it good uh, he said I will make it a terrifying sight uh, a place where whose name people uh, will use as a curse uh, but I have heard your prayer uh, and the punishment which I'm going to bring on Jerusalem uh, will not come until you die uh, I will let you die in peace uh, the men return to King Josiah uh, with this message uh, tell somebody it's coming down uh, tell them it's coming down uh, King Josiah summoned all the leaders of Jerusalem uh, 
and of Judah. Uh, and together they went to the temple, uh, accompanied by the priests and the prophets uh, and all the rest of the people, uh, the people that were rich and poor alike. Uh, before all the king read aloud uh, the whole book of the covenant, uh, which had been found in the temple, uh, he stood by the royal column uh, and made a covenant with the Lord to obey him, uh, to keep his laws and commands. Uh, with all his heart and his soul uh, and to put into practice the demands attached uh, to this covenant uh, as it is written in the book uh, and the people promised uh, to keep this same covenant uh, George Siah uh, he ordered the high priest uh, his assistants and the guard uh, to tear down every object uh, that was used in the worship of Baal uh, of the goddess Asherah and of the stars uh, the king went and burned all these objects uh, outside the city near Kindred Valley. Uh, tell somebody it's got to come down. Uh, and then he had the ashes taken to Bethel. Uh, he removed from the office the priest uh, that the king of Judah had ordained to offer sacrifices uh, to the other pagan altars uh, in the city of Judah uh, and in places near Jerusalem. Uh, I know I'm reading a lot but I think it's necessary. Uh, all the priests who offer sacrifices to Baal uh, to the sun, the moon, the planets, uh, and to the stars. Uh, he removed from the temple the symbol of the goddess Asherah, uh, took it out of the city Kindron Valley. Uh, he burned it and pounded it, uh, pounded it to ashes to dust, uh, and scattered it over the public burying ground. Um, he destroyed the living quarters in the temple, uh, occupied by the temple prostitutes. Uh, it was there that the women wove robes uh, used in the worship of Asherah. He brought to Jerusalem the priests who were in the cities of Judah and throughout the whole country he desecrated every altar where they offered sacrifices. He also tore down the altars that were dedicated to the goat demons near the gate built by Jerusalem by Joshua the city governor which was left there at the gate the main gate that entered into the city. The priests were not allowed to serve in the temple uh, but they can eat the unleavened bread. Uh, King Josiah also desecrated Topeth uh, the pagan place of worship in Hinnon Valley uh, so that no one could sacrifice his son or daughter uh, again as a burnt offering to the god Molech. Uh, he also removed the horses uh, that the kings of Judah had dedicated uh, to the worship of the sun and he burned the chariots uh, used in this worship. Uh, they were kept in the temple courtyard uh, near the gate not far from the living quarters uh, of Nathan Lemak, uh, a high official. Uh, the altars which the king of Judah had built uh, on the palace roof above the king Ahaz quarters. Uh, king Josiah tore it down uh, along with the temple altars uh, put up by King Manasseh uh, in the two courtyards of the temple. Uh, do anybody get where I'm going? I'm just trying to tell you to tear it down. You, you, all I'm doing is talking about what the king did in order to bring God back. Uh, we've got to tear it down. It might be boring, but I promise you it's going to make you a believer. Amen. King Jeroboam, son of Nebit, who led Israel into sin. Josiah poured down the altar, broke it into stones, into pieces, uh, uh, pounded them to dust. He also burned the image of Asherah. Then Josiah looked around, saw some tombs uh, there on a hill. Uh, he had the bones looked around and saw some tombs there on a the hill. Uh, he had the bones taken out of them uh, and burned on the altar. In this way, he desecrated the altar, doing what the prophet had predicted long before during the festival of King Jeroboam. Uh, was standing by the altar. King Josiah looked around uh, and saw the tomb of the prophet uh, who had made this prediction. Uh, he asked the question, who tomb is that? Uh, the people of Bethel answered, it is the tomb of the prophet uh, who came from Judah and predicted these things uh, that you have done today to this altar. Uh, he said, leave it as is. Uh, his bones are not to be moved. Uh, his bones were not moved. Uh, neither were those of the prophets who came from Samaria uh, in every city of Israel uh, built by the king 
kings of Israel, uh, who thereby aroused the Lord's anger. Uh, he did to all those altars uh, what he had done in Bethel. Uh, he killed all the pagan priests on the altar uh, where they served, uh, and he burned human bones on every altar. Uh, then he returned to Jerusalem. Uh, I come to tell you, greater St. Peter, uh, I'm about to get out of here now. Uh, if we want to change our homes, uh, we've got to change it first in us. Uh, we can't change the church uh, until it becomes personal to us. Uh, we've got to repent and begin again. Uh, but ultimately, it must come down. Uh, we've got to pull down everything uh, that we've allowed in our lives uh, to be exalted before God. Uh, that's the only way, St. Peter, uh, that we'll be able to change this block. Uh, that's the only way, St. Peter, uh, we'll be able to change this community uh, and change the city of Evanston. Uh, we've got to get back to the word and the witness uh, and witness the word again for ourselves uh, and make sure that we are adding up. Uh, not perfect, but that we are in line. Uh, David seen Goliath uh, torturing the army of the Lord. Uh, this was one of David's high place situations. Uh, a giant that thought he was a god, uh, but he had to come down. Uh, David asked the question, uh, who is this uh, that defies the army of the Lord? Uh, who is this uh, that have cursed our God? Uh, and David said in essence, uh, put me in. Uh, I'll take him down. Uh, David took a slingshot in a rock. Uh, even though the army official uh, tried to put his armor on David, uh, David was not used to that. Uh, he was used to killing lions, tigers, and bears. Uh, he was used to taking them down. Uh, and he took the slingshot. Uh, and he took his stones. Uh, and he went before Goliath. Uh, and when he went before Goliath, uh, the question was asked by Goliath, uh, who is this pretty boy uh, that y'all sit here? I'm going to kill him like a dog. Uh, I'm going to chop off his head. Uh, you know how the devil would do. He'll make idle threats. Uh, he'll say all kind of things to distract you. Uh, he'll put things in your mind uh, so that you can forget about what God said. Uh, but in this season, I declare uh, that we remember what God said, uh, that we remember God's promise uh, and tear down every high place uh, that is not like God. Uh, David took his stone uh, and his slingshot. Uh, you know the story. Uh, and when he flung it, uh, it only took one. Uh, and I come to tell you, greater St. Peter, uh, I feel my key changing and ain't no music. Uh, it's time to pull it down. Uh, everything that's not like God. Uh, I can hear the hymn writer saying, uh, tell me uh, who can stand before us uh, when we call uh, on that great name. Uh, when you call on the name of Jesus, uh, it'll pull it down. Uh, it'll tear it down. Uh, it'll take out uh, whatever has been exalted. Uh, who thought uh, that it was big enough for God? Uh, ask Adam and Eve uh, who sinned and ate the tree, uh, who ate from the tree of life. Uh, the devil got in there uh, and said you will not die, uh, but you will become just like God. Uh, and they did what the devil said. Uh, you better watch yourself. Uh, you better watch your company in this season. Uh, you better watch the words that's being spoken. Uh, and you better trust God like never before uh, and pull it down. Uh, I declare a prophetic mantle on your life. Uh, I declare wisdom on your life. Uh, I declare that you'll be able to see it uh, before they even open up their mouth. Uh, that you'll smell them uh, before they even come in your presence. Uh, that you'll be able to identify uh, and pull it down. Uh, tell your neighbor, say neighbor, uh, we've got to pull it down. Uh, anything that's standing in your view uh, and in your way of victory, uh, it must come down. Uh, pull it down. Uh, I won't leave here bound with it. Uh, when God has given us access and authority uh, to bind it up, uh, he said what you bind on earth, uh, I'll bind in heaven. Uh, what you loose on earth, uh, I'll loose in heaven. Uh, it's time to bind it uh, and pull it down.
down. Uh, somebody say, I must uh, pull it down. Uh, as we prepare uh, to come and take the Holy Eucharist, uh, the leaders of the religious law uh, wanted to know uh, after Jesus came uh, and flipped over the tables, uh, whose authority uh, did you come in? Uh, who told you uh, that you could come into this holy place uh, and that you can do what you've done? Uh, he told them, uh, he said, destroy this temple uh, and in three days uh, I'll raise it up again. Uh, they told him it took us decades uh, to build this temple uh, and here you are saying uh, you will build it up in three days. Uh, that was a high place. Uh, they took him to the cross called Calvary uh, and they should have let him lay there uh, but they made a mistake uh, and they lifted him up uh, fulfilling the prophecy uh, and I if I uh, be lifted up from the earth uh, I'll draw uh, all men unto me uh, every high place uh, from the temple uh, to the sinner at the cross. Uh, every high place. Uh, the blood that fell from Jesus uh, was at a high place. Uh, and the sinner was at his feet uh, who was mocking and laughing. Uh, who was taunting and was sent to destroy. Uh, the blood and the water uh, it hit his eyes uh, and his eyes became open uh, from the high place of God. Uh, and he said to himself, uh, this must be uh, the son of God when Jesus gave up the ghost, uh, the room in the temple uh, where the curtain was, uh, it ripped from the top to the bottom. Uh, and when it ripped, uh, the earth began to shake. Uh, and the Lord uh, pulled down uh, every high place uh, until he destroyed uh, the quarters in the temple uh, where the priest lost and lived. Uh, but I come to tell you, uh, three days later, uh, he got got up uh, just like he said he would. Uh, every high place uh, that's exalted itself before the Lord. Uh, he said I'll bring down. Uh, tell somebody it's coming down. It's coming down. It's got to come down. We used to sing a song um, uh, um, shout to your walls come down. The walls of opposition they must come down. Uh, so I'm telling you greater St. Peter and those who are listening uh, whatever you are going through in your life uh, whatever has become an Isaiah in your spirit uh, whatever we have given more power and authority than we have given to God uh, it's time that we pull it down. Uh, is there anybody going to be naked and un un unashamed uh, to say I got some stuff uh, that I need to pull down down. Uh, is there anybody going to be honest with themselves? Uh, I got some things in my life. Uh, it might not even focus yet, uh, but it was on my heart and my mind. Uh, and I know it was not of God. Uh, and I need to pull it down. Uh, tell somebody I'm pulling it down. I'm pulling it down. I'm pulling it down. Uh, because the rest of my days uh, got to be the best of my days. Uh, and I don't want any interference, Pastor. Uh, I want to be full of God. Uh, I want to be on my target. Uh, I want to make sure that I finish and I finish strong and victorious. Tell somebody pull it down. I think I gotta stop. The doors of the church is open. Maybe there's someone here today. I preach with music or without. I'm telling you, I got a hammer B3 in my head and I come to pull it down. I'm telling you, y'all sitting there and I got angels dancing in my spirit. Do you hear me? I mean, because we got to pull it down. Maybe there's someone here today or in our virtual platform who wants to give their life to the Lord. We offer Christ to you, my sister. We offer Christ to you, my brother. It is a wonderful day. It's a wonderful season and opportunity for you to pull it down. And this is the moment. This is the season. This is the opportunity. This is the most important part of our worship experience. And that's that we offer Christ to you on today. So if you are here in this sanctuary and you need the Lord, you want to partner with us, you want to become a part of these loud, these loud praisers. Uh, yes, we're not silent statues. We loud. We loud and we do it on purpose. Uh, every time you say, I want you to know I'm loud. I'm going to be quiet in the meeting. But as soon as you open up the sanctuary, I mean, I'm going to open up my mouth. I'm going to spare not one. And if you sit next to me, your foot might get trampled over. So I suggest you sit somewhere else because I got a reason. Because I pulled some things down and God has pulled some things out. So I could still stand here today. Because if what was what still is, I wouldn't be able to stand here. Pull it down. If you are on our virtual platform, you can go to our website. You can inbox us. 
You can call us whatever it takes. We want to help you get to where you need to be in Christ. None of us are perfect. We've made mistakes and we will make mistakes. But the thing is, knowing that Jesus is able to fix it, knowing that he's able to bring us out, that's the most important thing in our lives. Amen? Amen. So if that's you, we're going to pray now that the Lord will touch your heart, that he will touch your mind, and that you will use wisdom to make the change. Come on, somebody say, I got to pull it down. Father, in Jesus' name, we love, honor, and we adore you. We thank you because you are God, and beside you there is none other. And, Lord, as we understand that we must pull it down, God, we ask, God, that you pull us, God. As we pull it down, God, we ask that you will push us, Father. As we pull it down, God, we ask, God, that you will give us wisdom, oh, God, for the work and for the journey, God. In the name of Jesus, we declare and we speak victory in the name of Jesus. Do it for every hearer and every believer now in Jesus' name. As we pull down everything that's not like you, God, we ask that you will replace it with your glorious presence in the name of Jesus. We don't want to be found empty, but we need to be full of you, God. In the name of Jesus, oh, God, bless every need, every sick person, God. Bless every family member in this place, God. Oh, God, bless our homes and our jobs, God. Bless our vehicles, Father, in the the name of Jesus bless our finances father touch us God touch our communities and our blocks Lord you know every need and we put it all in your hands today father in Jesus name we declare it to be so now amen let's now receive our announcer at this time Good morning, St. Peter's. Today is sub Sunday, September 3rd, 2023, and these are our ministry reminders and updates for Greater St. Peter. Christian education returns virtually via Zoom on Tuesday, September 5th at 7 p.m. CST, and you are invited. Once again, St. Peter is selling those amazing dinners on Friday, September 8th at 11 a.m. right here in the church, free featuring fried chicken, baked chicken, green beans with smoked turkey meat, candy yams, and cornbread, and a slice of homemade pound cake for $15. Help us champions this event by purchasing and simply sponsoring through financial support. Have you placed your order? You can call 847-630-9817 or 847-971. 9784. Greater St. Peter celebrates our pastor's seventh year anniversary on Sunday, September 17th, 2023 at 4 p.m. Pastor Clifford Wilson is our guest speaker, and we are inviting you to come and celebrate together another year of leadership of our pastor. The City of Praise celebrates the Shepherd's Day Sneaker Ball on Saturday, October 28th, 2023. General admission, $25 at 2 p.m., Sponsors, $50, and VIP reception, $75, starting at 1 p.m. Are you ready to become a partner in this growing body of believers? This is your time to join us with membership. Become a member right where you are, anywhere and everywhere, all over the world, in our virtual sanctuary. This is your day to become connected today. Luke 6 and 38 Give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be poured into your lap, for which the measures you use, it will be measured to you. It is our commitment to the community. We need your support and ask that you would sow into our ministry to help keep reaching and expanding this great work. Become a sponsor and plant a seed today. To sow into St. Peter, Use our cash app at dollar sign St. Peter SWO by Zell St. Peter FBH1 at hotmail.com or you can mail your donations to 1712 Hovland Court in Evanston, Illinois 60201. We are here for you. Do you have a prayer request or want to let us know how we're doing? Visit our website at www fbhchicagoofficial.org and click on connect with us. 
and the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he be committed sin, they shall be forgiven him. We are continuing to pray for all those sick and shut in, bereaved, and those who said, remember me. Members in bereavement, none reported. Members in the hospital, none reported. Let us keep these precious saints in the world in prayer. These conclude our announcements for Sunday, September 3rd. Please govern yourself accordingly. Thank you. the Lord everybody as we prepare to transition into communion I want you to prepare your hearts and minds I'll be reading from the gospel of Matthew chapter 26 verses 26 through 30 and it reads and as they were eating Jesus took bread blessed and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said take eat this is my body then he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them saying, drink from it all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on into the day when I drink it new with you in my father's kingdom. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this opportunity to commemorate and to remember your great sacrifice. Father, we thank you that all who have accepted you as their Lord and Savior are welcome at this table. So Father, as we prepare to take the bread and the wine, let us not forget your great sacrifice. Let this not be just a, a ritual, Lord, but let it be something that we reverence, that we honor, that we enter into soberly, God, recognizing what you have done for us, that you gave your body to be breathed and your blood to be shed for the remission of our sins. So we thank you now, God, as we prepare to partake of this communion meal. We ask this prayer in the matchless name of your son, Jesus, and we say amen and praise God.
Has everyone received their elements? Is that a yes? On the same night that Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread and before he break it, he blessed it. And he said, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us eat together. In the same manner, he took the cup and he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this for as often as you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Let us drink together. For as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we celebrate the death of Jesus Christ until his return. You have run some 30 days from Satan, and we ask that you would arise and that you would go in peace. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.